Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahola, Second Swing Golf, joined today by Mr. Kevin Kraft here in the Tour Event, a second swing at Minnetonka. And today is a fun discussion on gap wedges. And so I think a popular question that we get all the time, uh, both on the YouTube channel, I'm sure you guys do in fittings, is is it better to have the gap wedge with the iron set or a gap wedge that's with your specialty wedge set, such as a Vokey SM9? And so um, today we're going to hope to answer some of those questions for those golfers. So um, today we've got four different wedges here, uh, roughly about 48, 49, 50 degrees. Yep. So all gap wedges, right? But yeah. they're all very different in their builds. Yes. So first we have the, you know, a Vokey SM9, 48 degree. Traditional um, wedge. This is a, yeah, you yeah. call this a traditional wedge. You know, there's not necessarily forgiveness on this wedge. It's more about the feel and the control. Yep. All right. And then moving along, we have another closer to a, you know, a traditional wedge, but there are some forgiveness properties in yes. there. The Cle Cleveland, excuse me, CBX zip core. So some extra weight in there, a little bit of a cavity. So a little bit more forgiving. A little bigger, a little bigger sole. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So that's a little bit more forgiving, but still kind of a traditional yeah. quote unquote wedge. Yeah. Now we get into gap wedges with iron sets. Yeah. And so I think from that point, we go to the Mizuno JPX 921 hot metal mm -hmm. gap wedge. So built like the irons in the hot metal set, um, but just more loft as it was a gap wedge. And then lastly here, we have a, for sure the most forgiving club here in the set, the Stealth HD um, A wedge or, or gap mm -hmm. wedge here in this set. So. Very large club head, lots yes. of weight dropped low, very forgiving. Um, definitely built for players that might need a little bit more speed or height. So, sure, absolutely. Um, Mr. Kraft now, we've kind of summarized the different clubs here, but yeah. generally, what do you kind of tell golfers if they have this question for you in the fitting bag? So it definitely depends on the individual. Um, you know, better players do tend to like to go into aftermarket wedges mm -hmm. uh, with their sets. You look at the guys on tour, most of those guys are going through pitching wedge and then going gap sand lob. So yep. for, for the Vokey guys, they might stop at nine iron and put in a, you know. Yeah, like a 40, 46 six, degree. Yeah, 46 yeah, degree exactly. Yep. So, um, yeah, most of those guys are going to go for, for, you know, the aftermarket wedges. Most people, I feel, will benefit from going to a set gap wedge yep. just so that it flows really nicely through. Gap wedge is typically a full swing club. Uh, it's not something that we manipulate a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're not going to find much of a grind on any of these right, things, correct. right? So uh, because of that, just sticking with that through the set tends to make the the, mm -hmm. the, the, the right decision. Um, where it can get a little dicey, I guess, is if you are a, you know, if you're playing a game improvement club and you really like to chip around the greens with your, with your gap wedge, uh, some of these faces get pretty hot. Right? And they it can be a little hard to control those shots. So, you know, listening when when we're talking to our, our customers about the way they play their shots is very important so that we can then make the right recommendations based on, right. you know, what's, what's good and what's going to work for their game, mm -hmm. right? So that's one of the things I would watch out for yeah, is... Because, uh, you know, if, if this player has Stealth HD irons yeah. and they like to hit the bump and run with a gap wedge yeah. from off the green... That shot in particular probably is going to be a lot better with a, say, a Vokey or a traditional yes, wedge yeah. versus this we could be very, juiced up Stealth HD yeah, A wedge. We can be very bumpy and very runny with that. Correct, yeah. correct. But if they're using this only for full swings, yeah, you know, yeah. you probably want the performance of that kind of right, extra exactly. forgiveness. If we're trying this. to get that trajectory in there, yeah. you know, that's that's what that club's designed to do. Correct. So for today's purposes, we're going to hit just a few full swings with each of these and sort of maybe kind of dial in the... the Trackman numbers on those yeah. full swings because my, I guess, hypothesis is that the clubs that are larger or more distance oriented are going to be maybe further yeah. or maybe launch yeah. higher, but they might also be a little bit of a bigger dispersion circle, just a little bit more unpredictable. Distinctly possible. And then, uh, meanwhile, the Vokey here, which is a traditional wedge, yeah. um, will be a little bit more consistent, but that's mostly just a theory based on what I know about the clubs. So yeah. I think the next part is that we got to find out what happens. Absolutely. All right, so Mr. Kraft, we're starting with the most forgiving club, at least we think. we It should be the most forgiving club. She big. The Stealth HD, I believe yeah. that's at uh, 49 yes. degrees. 49 degrees. 49 degrees. Um, <laughs> I imagine you see kind of a, a lot there uh, at address. 
Yeah, there's there's a lot down there. Yeah, it's this is designed as a very forgiving golf club, and it has the size to give you that that sense of yeah security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Very high. Well, honestly, for a, for a gap wedge, that did go pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. That first one might have been just a touch heavy. Okay. I kind of thought so based yeah. on the spin, but yeah. we can. One of those top of the face ones. I mean, you are relatively consistent on the distance with this thing so far. Yeah, no, it's good. Is that, my, is, is that my standard issue push to the right? Yeah, just, yeah, sli- I mean, just slightly. Push to just the right slightly. is yeah. one way to describe that. Okay. I describe it as a slight, slight, slight miss. To yeah, right. yeah. But, okay. Um, How would that, I mean, that, we can kind of go through it, but the feel of that thing, obviously it feels more I, like a your improvement iron, I imagine. Felt pretty good. Yeah. I, think I, was, I was a little surprised. I mean, it felt better than it looks. Uh, yeah, it's, it definitely it's just, has a unique look to it. This is yeah, it's not, we're talking about. Yeah, so. it, it's not my shape of choice for sure right. for, for a wedge, but, um, you know, sits down. It's pretty easy to square. I love the, the white line on the bottom helps with, with that, getting that face angle just yeah. right. And I mean, felt pretty good overall. Yeah. So we've yeah. got our, our shots up here. I know this first one was the one we thought was maybe a little bit of a miss hit we can remove. Yeah, that was really the only one that was out, um, of, out of bounds. So otherwise. what I'm noticing here, and I, I, I feel like the big thing is going to be, I mean, I mean you, these are pretty darn good consistent carry numbers, right? Yeah. Um, I do think as we go down, knowing how well you hit the club, um, these spin numbers are going to get a lot tighter in, and I guess the, the, the variation or the deviation. Could very well. Could um, very well. I think 423, it's a good number, but yeah. I think, you're gonna get a lot better as we go yeah. down the line. Yeah. So, but um, I mean a good, I mean a good start. I mean you're you're swinging the club obviously very well here. So, I've been swinging all day, so it's about time I'm hitting it good. That's a fair point. So now we got the Mizuno JPX nine two one, and um, this is where you sort of get to some of these brands that do sort of build the gap wedges with the set, kind of more like wedges. Like they're still yeah. obviously you look at the back of the club, you see sure. The forgiving elements, yes. the, you see the cavity in there, similar to the entire set of the hot metal irons. Um, I know on the face, they have the quad cut grooves like all of their wedges. So yeah. there's a combination of wedge technology and, and game improvement iron technology here. I like I like it when companies dedicate a little more effort and design time to their wedges. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people out there that just play everything with a straight face and a set wedge can be absolutely perfect, right? But, you know, you get that shot where you've got 30 yards and you got a bunker between you and the, the pin, mm-hmm. guess what? Probably want to open that club up. Try to, get, right. try to get a little more loft in there. Try to get, send it up nice and high and soft. So uh, having some, some grind, having some dedicated milled grooves, anything that makes it play in a more versatile way, yeah. I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, I think this is going to be interesting now because the loft I believe on this one's also forty nine. I believe the, that is correct. The yes. ninth, so it should be the yeah. same loft as the Stealth HD. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm predicting that spin rate will be more more you know, consistent. More consistent. Okay. Yes. All right. Peeled that one a little bit less. Ah, oh, yeah. One more here then. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go right to the spin. Okay. So we got our dispersion there. Um, 
which is a you which can probably take seeming, that. It you seems, can take the one pulley guy out. Yeah, it, it seems larger. Sixteen feet right or left. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, it's we're not that bad. But nitpicking here, but so even with though, I should say, even with this one that you didn't yeah. swing as well, yeah. you kind of pull. I don't want to say pull hooked it. It was a wedge. It wasn't a pull hook, but hope it wasn't a pull hook. <laughs> it, it was a draw. Yeah. That with the, with yeah. the rest of them, you've been hitting them pretty straight, but. Your consistency factor was was much you know better. Yeah. And we take this one out here, and it gets you know we get that Ooh. deviation number under a yeah. hundred. So drew the hold with the win right there. I yeah. Yeah. Winner, winner, yeah. chicken dinner. So, mm. um, I I I think we're gonna see that trend even continue further. Um, I don't think it's gonna get tighter than ninety seven. I think it could. I think it could. <sighs> Bold statements. My we're gonna friend. we're Bold getting statements. into more. Clubs now built like a traditional wedge. So, yeah. um, I mean, with because we're not that concerned at this point with the distance, right? Like distance, you hit it further. That's, I mean, with the with the hot metal, that it did launch a little bit lower, which tr the more traditional wedge will probably launch a little bit lower as we go here. Yeah. Because um, these those clubs then are more built for the control and able to knock it down if you need to type of thing. So. Um, yeah, this is kind of delivered exactly what I what I thought it would, at least for the first two clubs. Yeah. So, <laughs> next one is the Cleveland CBX Zip Core. So, as we talked about, a traditional wedge with yeah. some More extra weighting and a cavity in there. So, Des similar to the club you just hit. Yeah, designed specifically for those who are playing cavity back irons. Yeah. Right? Keep that forgiveness going all the way through. I personally, I love the Zip Cores. Uh, it's got a good wide sole, but it's got nice relief across the back, so you can you can open that face without the the leading edge just popping straight yeah. up. Um, they're nice and forgiving. I like the look of a little bit bigger wedge. Yeah. When it's in the right shape, um, and these are I think these are great. Yeah. Yeah. So we should note this one is 50 degrees. So yes. Should see. I would imagine it's going to go just not a quite few as far. Yards maybe less, a little maybe. bit more yeah. spin. We'll yeah. see. That's more better. There you go. Okay. Get curious because this club is definitely spinning at a lower rate than mm. the last couple. That one was just a touch thin. Spin rate came up. Let's do one more. It's about as good as I can hit a wedge right there, I think. Yeah. Turned it just a little bit, but okay. So here we had the one there that the end that you kind of hit thin, you yep. said. So we'll take yep. that out. And <clears throat> you, I, you were right in the sense that the spin consistency did not get under 100 again. Beating so. beating 97 in consistency with spin yeah. is it's a lot that's to ask. A tall I, I, order it's a lot for to sure. Ask. Yeah. I I agree. Yeah. Um but it's much still much more consistent than the Stealth HD. Yeah. Um I mean these dispersion circles are very very small too. I also think bad. it's a little bit funny that none of them are really overlapping at all. They kind of have their own place out there. I have no idea what the lie angles are on these. Yeah. So that could have a lot to do with it. That could. That could. I'm very lie angle sensitive. Um so yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing, I don't want to say a trend yet. I'm thinking the Vokey will maybe confirm some things, but it's it's a consistency and forgiveness decision, I think, for a player. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. as we talked about at the beginning, the way you use your gap wedge as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, last one here is going to be just a Titleist Vokey SM9. It's got the F grind, 48 degrees, so it should go a little further than these ones. But okay. CGL apparently didn't like this wedge. Yeah, that uh, there is a custom stamping on this yeah. one. This is these were all, by the way, from our used inventory here at Second Swing um, in the Minnetonka store. I so. love that you did me a solid with the steel fiber one. I know that's what I that, did see that, that one, and I, I, I figured that one had to get in the test. Yeah, so. this is this is good. All right, the things you find in the used inventory at Second Swing. Yeah, there's it's fun. There's treasure in these hills. You just gotta just yep. gotta find it. Yep. All right. There's about seven times this that are actually a lot more than that in our in our warehouse DC. Oh, goodness. Boy, that felt good. Yeah. Oh my, look at that. 
I do, I do rather love the feel of the shaft, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of feel, you, can you tell the difference in the feel between this and the other clubs? Like a, a little bit. A little I mean, bit? Not a it's, ton? Not, it's not huge. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not huge. This feels feels more like a forged club. Yeah. Though it's cast. Yeah. Right? But that might go into the shape of the club too. Good, yes, for sure. One more here. Okay. <sighs> Now I've got the SM9 shots. Let's see here. Got this guy we can move. And then our, uh, we got our dispersion circle I gotta bring up too, which again, no overlapping, you know, taking place here. Um, but these are pretty good wedge dispersions right yeah, here. Yeah, uh, everything's inside the 15 foot zone. Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, you're we're talking you're, about a gap wedge, we're not talking about a lob wedge, so. Right. I'm I'm perfectly happy with 15 feet with a oh, yeah. with a gap wedge. I mean, I'd, I would like, I'd like better, but I'm okay with 15. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, quick, I mean, the, the SM9 going the first is not a, a surprise, given that it is the strongest lofted. Um, again, I think we we have some. This may have been just this hot metal. Just may have been you putting some really really good swings on the club to see how that spin was so consistent. I mean, we you flatter about me. We're talking about 88, 29, 89, 81, 90, 18, 90, 96. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I guess, is there anything else here, Kevin, you see from this test here? Because we've, we've kind of given the, the piece on the construction of the clubs. I know, you know hitting the shots here with a full swing is only kind of part of the whole discussion, yeah. right? Yeah, there's the, there's a bunch of nuance to this. Yeah. So, so you know... Yeah. Height-wise, very similar. Yep. Landing angle is great on all of them. There's no issues there. Um, Distance-wise, you know the Stealth HD, a little lower. Could have been by virtue of the shaft. Yeah. This was going to be the heaviest of the group, mm -hmm. um, even though shaft was a little tiny bit lighter than it was on the CBX. Vokies are known for a little more weight. Yeah. There's a lot of people that swing heavier, a little faster. Yeah. So. Um, it could also be slightly longer, being a 48 over a 50, but don't know for sure. Um, but spin's not really an issue mm -hmm. uh, with any of these. You know, even the CBX at 8,000 was producing a 52.8 degree landing angle. There's really nothing wrong with that. Right. So, um, how you're going to use these wedges around the greens, how you play them out of the fairways, uh, that's all consideration and what you like looking at. Yeah, um, I think I think I think what this shows is if you're if you are a player that is using your gap wedge for full swings only. Yes, I think what we're seeing is it won't make a humongous difference nope. whether you go with your iron set or whether you go with a specialty wedge. Yep. And if it is a cost thing for you, maybe you choose the cheaper option of yeah. them, which most cases is the set the uh, yeah. gap wedge with the set. Just adding one more club there. Um, oh, that's some of these, kind of changing. Some, some of the, it, yeah, that's true. It yeah. really is. Uh, some of these new wedges um, or new iron sets are yeah. getting expensive by the piece. But, um, but like we mentioned, it's there are some pieces. Uh, you know, the more game improvement y clubs might have some more variation on those full swings. Sure. But they also are going to have some more forgiveness and launch properties yes. that if you need those, you might want those for those shots. Yeah. So, um, I think that's what we discovered today. Yeah. So uh, not a ton of findings, but I think enough that yeah. I think a lot of people are going to have questions answered here. Yeah, I think you're going to find that the the player that wants a game improvement club may definitely benefit from either going with the gap, the set gap wedge, or something like the CBX. Mm -hmm. um, the you know the little bit better player that's really trying to dial in those wedges. Yeah. Um, going with a, a set wedge that's designed a little more like a wedge, or you know your aftermarket. Wedge. Everybody yep. has an aftermarket wedge, so and there's so many good ones out there. I love them all. Yeah, they're all awesome, right? I just can't play them all at the same time. Uh, that's gonna be what they're gonna gonna go after. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was this was good. Yeah, yeah. You no, had some good shots. No too. losers in this group. I mean, 
Spurs or circles say it all. There's a lot of consistency to be had regardless of what you choose. So, Mr. Kevin Kraft, thank you for hitting those wonderful shots and thank giving you. the insight today. Uh, golfers, go get fit at Second Swing. Make sure your wedges, whether it's a, a wedge set with your iron set or um, your traditional wedges, make sure they're dialed in for your swing. Thank you for watching.